Welcome back to Business of Politics. We're talking to USEC David Admiral. Uh, sir, um, talk, uh, talk about uh, the, 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 the technology part. Because, you know, the, these plans are all good, but, uh, of course, they're reliant on uh, other things. Uh, some of them uh, from the private sector. For example, uh, there was a lot of uh, excitement with the rollout of uh, Elon Musk's uh, 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 satellite system. Um, but, you know, um, there, you know, a report, there were reportedly some problems with that. But what have you been hearing? What has been your experience? Well, for me, um, there are successful use cases. I hear okay. that, uh, well, uh, under the Office of, the, uh, of Connectivity, they were able to have good use cases, especially down to the uh, far plank areas of okay. the Philippines. Because uh, a lot of area in the Philippines, you cannot install fiber optics. Okay. You know, so you need to use satellites. Okay. So not only uh, the the Starlink the technology, but right. uh, the um, the ICT also use like VSATs and other right. satellite uh, providers. Right. To reach out also even the far flung areas. So the idea here is not only connectivity, but they combine that with the use case. Right. So meaning that's why we have. The solutions, the Ego Super App, the ELGU, right, right. the e-report, right. so that they're able to enjoy and also ask the LGU to support as well. Yeah. Because we need also the support of the local government units, you know, to make sure that they have connectivity. So this is a joint collaboration, you know, sure. between the government, the LGU, and the private sector. So for example, Starlink is already available nationwide now, or have there been some problems in some areas or how, how is it? How is it coming along? I know it's not part of the government, but you need them also to roll out some of these programs, yeah. right? Well, what have you been hearing? We're not. I'm not fully aware right now okay. on the Starlink uh, okay. issues, but uh, I hear that there are success stories already. Okay. The Good. Starlink. Good. Um, and uh, it's quite uh, an high-end technology right. where uh, you can just bring your satellite uh, right. using a backpack, and right. and you can have internet connectivity even uh, to the far flung areas. Uh, but for me, uh, we rely right now on the existing connectivity. Okay. You know, so we even ask, or even the telco, you know, to, right. to really help sustain and maintain also the existing connectivities, especially the free Wi-Fi projects. Okay. Yeah. And I understand the broadband plan is not your project per se, but as you said, you're working with different departments, also different people from the ICT itself. Uh, how is that project coming along? Because this is going to be important also to connect uh, the far-flung LGUs um, throughout the country, right? Yes, so we're all proactive right now. You know? Okay. We have uh, upskilling handled by USEC Giselle. Okay. So she's doing a lot of upskilling. Uh, that, she's the one in charge of the broadband? Uh, or no, that, that's not upskilling. upskilling side. Upskilling, okay. USEC Nuestro. Okay. An An Angelo Nuestro. She, okay. He's the one doing the connectivity side. I see. So okay. he's the one doing the uh, the free free Wi-Fi project, right. national broadband plan. Right. Right. So I can see a lot of activities. You know. Right. So for me, I am handing more on the e-government uh, side. So yeah. yeah. So we are in close collaboration because, uh, you know, e-government is useless without connectivity. Right. You know, e-government cannot be sustained without upskilling. Right. So we go right. hand in hand together. Right. No, I understand. As I said, came from Davao. Davao is also looking at connecting directly to Davao rather than relying on connections from, from Luzon. Uh, are there many of those also that the DICT is working on as, you, as far as you're aware of? Yes, we're partnering to all LGUs. Okay. So, in fact, uh, we are merging our strength with them because if they're doing something, we need to integrate them. Okay. Just to make sure to have uh, national visibility also. Okay. Um, I also hear that uh, we need to have a monitoring system okay. of the whole area of the Philippines so that we okay. know which area we need to help, we need okay. to assist. Okay. Because maybe we're trying to do something here, but there are already connectivity here. Why we need to do more connectivity there? Sure. So we need to be strategically, you know, putting all of this satellites or connectivity right. so that more Filipinos will, will enjoy more e-government solutions. Right. So uh, what are some of the concerns that you have? I mean, besides, you know, the the availability of the of the skilled workers, uh, what what are the other concerns that that you are or DCI, DICT is looking at that need to be resolved, right? So that you can roll out these these plans successfully. I think uh, the plan to migrate, okay, okay, from legacy systems, okay, to new ones, okay. Sometimes uh, you know agencies still cling with their own old old systems. Okay, innovation cannot be dependent, okay, on old, old technology. Okay. It should be migrated. 
Okay. That's why we've been educating a lot of government agencies to have their own migration plan. Okay. Because it's, it's too expensive, you know, to maintain okay. legacy systems. Sure. Super expensive. Okay. A lot of maintenance, a lot of cloud services, servers, and right. so on and so forth. Right. New technology nowadays are very light. Okay. They are easy to maintain. Okay. You know, cheap. Okay. And it can be maintained, uh, you know, even few people. Okay. Okay. Maybe that, that's one. Another one is uh, actually the, uh, the collaboration between uh, IT guys, okay, of okay. government agencies. Okay. So coordination. Coordination. So yeah. the good news is we have the CIO Council. Okay. This is, uh, our chairman is uh, uh, Secretary Ivan. Okay. So I am the CIO, okay. the Chief Information Officer of the ICT. Okay. And agencies, they need to have their own CIO. Okay. Uh, communication is also the big gap. Okay. Because government are not talking to, to each other. To each other. Mm. So sometimes they're, they're doubling the task. Right. They're repeating the task. So PNP might know about it, but the Bureau of Fire does it, or the other way around, or Correct. something like that? Yeah. So now we started uh, communicating. And the CIO Council is a very good uh, venue for them to communicate, okay. to tell what they have, so that if they have something, now agencies can use it. Yeah. If they also have something, maybe we prepare something here to link with them as well. So what, what are some of those issues that you are looking to resolve within the, the CIO uh, uh, concept? All agencies uh, should be able to appoint their own uh, CIOs. Are they compliant? I mean, uh, is it 100% compliance or now or not Not yet? right now, but okay. uh, a lot of agencies are already complying. Okay. They submitted already their respective CIOs. Okay. Now, for the first time, we're able to know uh, who's the responsible CIO in that right. particular agency. Right. Because if you don't know who's responsible in doing right. that innovation to their agency, we don't know who to talk to. Right. Right? So right. now, the communication is fixed. Once that's uh, solidified, I think we're able to communicate more and uh, do more things together. Yeah. Right, but I, I would imagine, you know, the ha you know that, that's still quite a large group, quite complicated. But, you know, how, 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 does, how does it operate? Maybe you can give us an insight, you know, because you're the one you're sitting on, on, on that body. Um, because you're, you're talking about the entire government uh, machinery here, right? So do you meet once a month, uh, once a quarter, or is it by cluster, or how does it work? Yeah, but as I said a while ago, the ICT is a non-sectoral agency. Okay. That's why we entice government agency to innovate on their own. I see. Okay, but we need to be notified. So you give them general guidelines and then yes. they implement on their yeah. own. We're not gonna do everything, you know? Okay. So this, agencies should have their own innovation activities. Okay. They should plan and implement their own uh, respective uh, uh, upgrades or enhancement right. of their technology. Right. But uh, moving forward, we need to be, we need to be uh, somehow familiarized of what they do. Right. Because maybe what they're doing there is also being done already by other agencies. Right. I think uh, the ICT is becoming like their enabler. You know? Right. So we're trying to bridge those gaps yeah. so that they can uh, achieve more yeah. uh, innovation. So w what are you recommending to them that this you know, um, as you said, the low-hanging fruit. What are you recommending to them that they should do first so that they can, you know, quickly have an impact on the other things that you are doing on a national level? Well, in my own opinion, uh, they need to revisit the foundation of technology that they have. Okay. Because uh, we discovered a are lot of... Are you talking of about operating system or this uh, are, hardware uh, or all of the above? Both. Okay. Both. Both, uh, okay. both hardware, peopleware, and okay. software. Okay. So these are the three vital things to fix okay. if you would like to have your solid uh, innovation. Okay. Number one, you need to have hardware that okay. could support your operation. Okay. You cannot use an old, old hardware and, right. and then implement things, new sure. things. Software, you sure. need to take a look at, uh, do you need to replace your system already or right. do you need to enhance it? And then lastly, people wear. Okay. Normally, we neglect this, the okay. people wear. Sure. Normally, we focus more on hardware and software, but we forgot people wear is actually the one that will sustain both of them. And uh, in my own observation, government agencies somehow, not neglect, maybe, if I may say, wasn't able to finance that. Sure. Okay, that's why I've been um, uh, encouraging government agency to make sure that you have budget for your own people wear. Right. So that uh, you can sustain your operation. You need to hire more people. You right. Know, new blood, new highly technical people. Right. To help them, you know, develop and uh, implement things in their own respective agencies. Yeah. Well, how, how do you do that for some of the farther or more remote areas where maybe the, the availability of talent is not as... Uh, 
you know, not like what you would see, say, in Metro Manila or Metro Cebu or Metro Davao, right? Um, are there talent available, you know, to, to work in some of those far-flung areas? Personally, I don't really believe that we're out of talents. We have okay. a lot of very good Filipino You're talents. You're not concerned about that? Okay. I'm not. The only concern is every time a certain IT guy finish his school, okay. the first thing in, in their mind, like me before, right. I want to go abroad. Right. Okay, if the government were able to change that culture, okay. make not only IT profession, right. maybe all other profession in the government, if we're able to somehow tantamount to the salary or compensation, right. okay, uh, equal maybe to the private, right. now we can entice them to stay in the government. Right. Because right now it's not actually attractive. Okay. So maybe that's that, that's maybe one of the biggest challenges in terms of innovation right. uh, in the government per se. Well, you, you know very well what the situation is, but how, how big is the gap between what the government is offering and, and what what can what they can possibly get working for the private sector? Is it something that's realistic for government to do something about it now, or do they have to, like you said, with the rollout of the ELGU and E report, they have to do it in in phases over maybe several years like give us a give us a uh maybe an assessment on how well, it, it, that it is. depends it depends on 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 our support as well you know okay. we need also finance to roll this one out we need to hire more people okay maybe we could also have we need to have contractors also to help us out right. moving forward okay because in the ict personally right now i don't have contractors right now we, we, okay. we do everything in-house right yeah we develop the super app okay in-house okay. we develop the elgu in-house and, and how many people are in your team right now i have around 200 people in the okay. e government right so we have around not, not very many considering the scale of uh work you have to, uh, to do, right? I'm lucky enough that a lot of my good friends from the private, they join me. So right. they, they're willing to sacrifice with me. So, <laughs> so I, I am glad and I'm very blessed that uh, I have a lot of patriotic uh, IT that uh, you know, they're, they're willing to drop their, their high salary in the private to join me as well in the government. You see, but uh, it might not be a long-term one. Right. That's why uh, we've been uh, fighting and we've been battling that uh, hopefully uh, hopefully in the future we have more budget in terms of manpower, you know, to sustain them. So that, that bill under Senator Cayetano, is that part of the yes. part of the part of the solution? Yes. So hopefully they're listening. So uh, <laughs> we'll be right back with uh, Business of Politics. We're talking to DICT, you said David Almiral Jr.